think you'll appreciate this. I think you forgot one sector where he mentioned technology and where its uses could be, which is in digital health. So as Brian mentioned, I'm a physician by training. Uh, just to give you some context, in 2012, I was working at another company, and in the last two years, had the privilege to found two healthcare startups in this space. And the ecosystem, that's what enabled me to do this. So you can see on the screen here, these organizations that are existing now to help startups to find capital and mentorship. Healthcare is a little different. It's not like a couch-based startup that you can start you know, you're dealing with people's lives, so you need the help you can get. And you are in perfect position to be able to tap into these. So we actually created an organization called Maryland Health Tech Coalition to help um, find a way to f uh, help Howard County's uh, economic development uh, through an earned grant that we did with uh, Howard County Community College. So what is digital health and how is it going to help? So, t you know, everybody knows, I'm going to quickly run through these bullet points here, and everybody knows the, 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 the current state of the healthcare in this country. The, the, it's, too expensive, um, you have to be able to provide better quality care at a lower cost, and so the challenges are, are numerous, and how do we get to uh, the changes that are going to happen to be able to afford this and, and, and produce the effects we need? So this is a slide of what we're dealing with, right? So everybody knows the costs, uh, we're currently at 16% of GDP for uh, delivering care at not too much better quality compared to the rest of the world. And so uh, a lot of the regulations that are going into place now are helping to deal with containing some of these costs. So, and the challenges are, if you, if you look at some of the data, a lot of the costs go into trying to maintain uh, health as you get older, um, trying to prevent health, and um, finding ways to engage with, with, between patients and clinicians before uh, the costs get out of hand. So one of the things that the Healthcare Reform Act uh, enabled is for policies to be uh, created, uh, and, and Maryland is one of those, right? The state of Maryland, uh, the, the hospital systems here have agreed to contain costs by tying the increase in revenue or increase in the charges to the, the growth of the, the state of Maryland. So the, the, the triple aim is one of these ways. Uh, to do, so the triple aim is focused on how do you improve health, improve healthcare, and uh, improve quality. So if you think about that, um, the challenges that face, um, in, in, in the face of those challenges, the only way that you can deliver care to a bigger population with a limited number of healthcare professionals is to now start using technology. And it's the first time now disruptive technologies have been enabled to be able to deliver this care uh, in, in healthcare. So now you're seeing this shift from a volume-based healthcare system to a value-based healthcare system where now your reimbursements and uh, the metrics that are tied to how doctors and patients are performing can be measured. And that's what digital health is. It's, it's everything that you see on this the screen, but I'm going to focus on a few aspects of that, which are related to how technology, because now how you use technology in other parts of your life is now, you know, people are realizing, why can't we do this when it comes to our health? So the doctors are ready, the patients are ready, and the infrastructure for enabling these uh, touch points to happen is already in place. So how, how, do you, how do you leverage this? And so that's, I'm going to show you a couple examples coming up in, in, a, in a, a few instances here. But one of the things that's going to start happening is as this shift in care happens, you know, how do you deal with the, the, the job loss that's going to happen? Just like Paul mentioned uh, in, the, in the taxi cab industry, hospital systems are going to have to start laying off you know, those, those uh, delivery services like patients and techs that are going to be disrupted. So workforce retraining happens to uh, be a, a big part of that. So, so digital health applies to every part of the healthcare system, right? So you have insurance providers, you have professional care, like doctors and nurses, you have patients, and then you have the ability to tie all that together with uh, patients having direct access to their own care. So that's all the places that this fits. And, and a big part of that is coming, comes down to how you can um, share the information that patients are generating with the kind of information that doctors and nurses need to provide the best care. So, so, so the, the, the information part of it is really amazing. There's so much information now that is relevant. So if you're able to channel that and use it at the time and the place when it's best needed, you're in a position to be able to um, deliver better care. So these are two examples. So this first one is uh, a platform that enables uh, patients to be in touch with their digital care plan, uh, avoids them to stay out of the hospital if you're a heart failure patient. The data is gathered at the home, communicated back into the healthcare system so that the nurses and the doctors can make the best decisions, the decisions to help you stay out of the hospital. The second one here is a more com uh, robust system, which is my current company, where we're able to now take all the relevant information that patients 
patients need and generate and now make it available to doctors in a, in a, in a way that um, improves care. Thank you. <laughs>